Today we're going to talk about blood thinners in dentistry and the importance of an accurate medical history, specifically related to the medications list. So I'll roll that intro. What's up everyone, Dr. Eric Jackson here. Hope you're all doing well. So like I said in the intro, we are gonna talk about blood thinners, we're gonna talk about medical histories uh, with special focus on the actual accuracy of them. So let's begin with that part first. Um, medicine and dentistry are interrelated, right? Um, we practice dentistry in the mouth as part of the body. What happens outside the mouth, but yet in the body, and impacts the, the mouth um, and vice versa. Uh, there is a lot of evidence in this. Um, probably the most prevalent that you'll find is the mouth-heart uh, connection, but there's all sorts of other mouth-body connection type examples out there. Um, very important concept because ultimately, as a dentist and in dentistry, even to this, to this day, you'll find patients that routinely un and unfortunately decide what's important to put on their medical histories. So it's very important uh, as, a, as a dental provider to go through that uh, routinely, no matter what, uh, when you have a new medical history put in front of you, you'll find very frequently that the patient will, and they, and they don't mean any, they don't mean any harm by it, but they'll say things like, "Oh, I didn't think you would need to know that." Uh, okay, but but yes, we do because you never know what you're going to what you don't know, right? It's imp it's the old saying: you've got to have a complete picture before you can really give a complete picture. So as a patient, I'm speaking to the patients now, please don't hold back anything. Uh, please make sure you list not only your prescription medications on the medication list, uh, but also your over-the-counter medications as well as your herbal supplementation. Now, we've altered our, uh, a long time ago, we altered our, our, our dental forms to include both, all three of those options to kind of prompt the patients to, to, to think about that and not forget the, 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 the other two, the, the over-the-counter and the herbal, both of which are very powerful. Um, they're, they should not be dis, uh, discounted. You know, 81 milligram aspirin um, is an anticoagulant. It's a, it's a blood thinner. Uh, there are many herbs out there that will, will keep you from clotting uh, if taken in, in, the, in the right um, and in the, in the proper dosage for that sort of thing. And it's not normally their cause of uh, the, the reason that they're being taken by the patient. The patient may not even know. Um, it's very, it's a whole different video, put it this way, to discuss herbal supplementation's impact on medicine. Remember, the most medications, many of the of different classifications of pharmacology came from plants, came from herbal origins. Um, just because it comes from GNC doesn't mean it's automatically safe. It needs to be put on your medical history and then let your doctor, he or she will be able to decide that. Um, if how that will impact your treatment. So blood thinners, right? Blood thinners in dentistry, very important. Blood thinners are often used uh, to prevent problems from happening. Um, sometimes they're used uh, reactively after a problem happens to keep an, an additional problem or a larger problem from happening. Um, the whole point is they work to thin the blood. That's why they're called blood thinners or collectively called blood thinners, more accurately called anticoagulants, right? They prevent you from clotting, prevent you from coagulating your blood. Now, why does that matter in dentistry? Well, for most dental procedures, they're not terribly invasive. Um, you know, regular type routine care, we'll say. Uh, but not every dental procedure is routine. Dentistry has a large portion of surgery to it. That's why there's an S in DDS. That's the doctor of dental surgery. So when you're talking about extractions of teeth, dental implant placement, um, periodontal gum surgery, there's a, and that's just a small list, there are many, many invasive where we deal with blood and we need to have proper clotting to, to keep the patient safe and complete the successful procedure. If that patient is on anticoagulants, obviously clotting becomes a bit of an issue. Uh, it needs to be discussed prior to the surgery and that's where communication comes in. Um, a common theme with all my videos is communication. Uh, communication in this instance is from the medical history, the patient to the, to the medical, the dental provider, but often there's gonna be a third party here, the medical provider. Um, the dentist will contact the medical provider. We always like to loop in anytime it's not our prescription and it's involving a blood thinner specifically, we wanna get a medical clearance. Um, it leads me to the next point. Well, what if you're a patient that's on blood thinners 
They don't, is it going to be that big a deal? Well, typically it's not that big a deal as long as you dot your I's and toss, cross your T's beforehand. Um, in the old days, there used to be just a small handful of blood thinners out there. You know, you got your Coumadin, then they came out with Plavix. Nowadays, they've got you know, dozens of different ones out there. They all act a little bit differently, and it's very important to consult your medical doctor. He or she will be able to talk to you about that person's specific needs, risks, and recommend a proper treatment as far as going forward. Um, well, you do not want to do this after the fact, obviously. That's much more dangerous for the patient and you need to mitigate your risks going into it. So what types of things might change? Well, um, as a general rule, I'll say this very first, don't change anything until you talk to your medical provider. So the dent, I mean, in our office, uh, we, you know, we don't do, we don't take patients off of their blood thinners. Um, there's a, you know, history of that in dentistry. We don't suggest things. We consult the medical doctor. We consult their primary care physician or the person who prescribed it, and then we see what they think. Um, case in point, sometimes you have to switch different medications. Um, sometimes it'll be surprisingly different from medical doctor to medical doctor, but that's fine because each person is different. Each provider is different, and why not dot your I's and cross your T's? So the same person that's on uh, warfarin, Coumadin, might have to come off of it temporarily, and then at the recommendation of the uh, medical doctor, and then switch to a different medication, a different type of uh, anticoagulant like Lovenox or whatnot. Other times there's other recommendations. Uh, we always default, defer to the medical doctor because they know not only that part of the treatment best, but also they know how it's gonna interplay with the overall health because we're working within the whole body. So ultimately, if you're a patient and you've had your blood thinners you know, recommended to be reduced, uh, to allow for the uh, dental treatment, perhaps stopped if they were uh, to allow for the dental treatment, or if you were switched to a different medication to allow for the dental treatment, that'll be coming from the medical doctor. Typically, though, as soon as the medical treatment, the dental treatment is over, you be, you're able to go back on to your normal schedule. Um, all this needs to be planned out properly so that you're the three headed uh, medical team, you know, the doctor, the medical doctor, the dentist, and the patient have to be all on the same page. And that's the most important thing here, being on the same page, having the same philosophies, listening and communicating. All these concepts provide for the best possible treatment, the best possible treatment outcomes, and the safest possible treatment as well, because ultimately that's what we really want, right? We want safe, positive, quality treatment for all our, all our patients and us as patients too, because I'm a patient as well. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, we love these videos, kind of a nice little in-depth conversation about all sorts of different topics. If you have any comments or questions or suggestions about future videos, go ahead and put those in the uh, comment section below. As always, if you like the video, please hit like and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that. When you subscribe, hit that little bell down there. That'll make sure you, notif you get notified on your phone whenever I upload a new video. Um, stay safe, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.